Hello, my amazing fifth grade artists. Today I'm going to show you how to do our first project for this school year. This is op art. And op art is abstract art that gives the illusion of movement the, through the use of pattern and color. Abstract art is art that doesn't have to look like something in the real world. It can look like something real, like it could be an abstract face, but it just doesn't look like a real face. This one, though, it doesn't really look like anything. It's just shapes and color and pattern, but it gives you the sense of an optical illusion. It looks like some of the areas are coming out and some are receding, and you get a sense of movement. The artist that we're going to be looking at is Victor Vasserly. Victor Vasserly was a Hungarian-French artist, and he's considered the grandfather and leader of the op art movement. He created op art. And this piece of artwork is called Zebra. It was created in the 1930s, and it's considered to be one of the earliest examples of op art. You can tell that these are zebras, but the way that he used his shapes by making some thin and some thick and making lots of movement, you get a sense that there's a lot of activity going on in this. It makes you feel like it's moving even though it's really not. This is another artwork, another example of op art by Victor Vasterly. These are just squares, but he's met, he's kind of tilted them and you get the feeling that they're spiraling down. Looks like lots of movement going on. So on the one that we're going to do, this one, the materials that you will need are a square piece of paper, black markers, you can use Sharpie or just regular Crayola black markers. Um, you need a white and a black crayon or colored pencil and a ruler. So I'm gonna start one of the most important things to start with is a square piece of paper. So I have this one. Um, this one is a 10 by 10 inch square piece of paper. I've, I've cut it so that every side is 10 inches. You may not have paper big enough to make a 10 inch square, so you can make it whatever size you need yours to be. Just make sure every side is the same length. And we are going to make some lines, divide it up with some lines. And this kind of is the hardest part, so you may need to get an adult to help you. I'm going to use a Sharpie so you can see what I'm doing, but you may want to use a pencil so if you mess up, you can erase it. And draw lightly with your pencil. That way, if you do have to erase something, you can do so very easily. So I'm going to start by making a horizontal line in the middle of my paper. So to make sure I get the middle correct, I'm going to measure. I'm using a yardstick. And so remember, this was 10 inches. What is half of 10? It's five, so I'm gonna make a mark at five, and then I'm gonna go on the other side and do the same thing. So you'll have to do it based on whatever the size is of your square. If your square is eight by eight, you'll, you would make a mark at four, because that's half of eight. And then I'm going to connect those two marks that I just made, and that'll make sure my line is straight. Okay, now I have a horizontal line. Now, I'm going to go back and measure. I want to get the middle here. So, remember, it's 10 inches across. So, I'm going to measure, and I'm going to make a mark at 5. And I'm going to make a little circle, a small little dot here. That's going to be very important as we do this to know where your middle is. So, this time, I'm going to make a vertical line in the middle, and I'm going to make sure it goes through that dot that we just made. Try to make it straight as you can. Use your straight edge. This is a vertical up and down line. So now you've got four sections. Now we're gonna make some diagonal lines. The most important thing when making these diagonal lines is that they go through the middle point that you just made. So I'm gonna find the corner on the left side and I'm gonna go down some and I'm gonna stick my ruler there. I'm gonna make sure it goes through the middle and it's going to come out somewhere along that side. Okay, just make sure it goes through the middle. That's the most important thing. Make sure it goes through that middle point. I'm going to draw it. See how that went through my middle dot? I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to find my corner, go down some, put the ruler, line it up so it goes through the middle, and it's going to come out down here. Okay, we're gonna do it one more time. I'm gonna find the corner. This time I'm gonna go over. I'm gonna put my ruler, go through the middle, 
come out down there. Every time it needs to go through the middle, they all need to meet up at the middle. I'm gonna find my corner, come over some, go through the middle, and it's gonna come out down here. Let's see, I think I'm gonna go over a little bit. All right, so it goes through the middle, double check. Now we have these spaces, these shapes. So I, I should have one, two, three, four, five, six on the top. One, two, three, four, five, six on the bottom. That's how you know you've done it right. Now we're gonna go in and make lines that are gonna make our shapes. So I'm going to start on this corner shape and I'm gonna make three lines that curve up. I'm gonna start towards the top and I'm gonna curve up, up, and up, just like that. They curve up. Then I'm gonna go to this one. Since this one curved up, now I'm gonna curve down. You have to go opposite every time. So I'm gonna start where that one left off. It would run off the page, so you wouldn't even see all of that one. See how that would just, if it curved down, it would run off the page. But on this one, I start here, curve down, curve down. Now we're doing opposites, remember, so you don't even see that side. So. Now we're gonna curve up, up. I think we should probably here make one just so we have a place where it comes out there. Okay, now we're gonna curve down, and down, and down. So you're just doing the opposite. You can turn your paper as you go. So this is gonna curve up, up, up. Down, 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 up, up, up. I'm gonna turn my paper. It really helps if you turn your paper. Down, up. Okay, I'm just gonna finish this out. This is why it's important if you use a pencil because it's it can be a little confusing. And if you draw light, your pencil will erase really easy. So try to remember to draw light with your pencil. And now on this part, we have to go back and connect it with that other one we started with. So you get some shapes like this. Now, when we go to color it, we're gonna make every other shape black. We're gonna leave some white and every other one black. So I'm gonna start back here again. I'm gonna leave that white Everywhere that I'm gonna color black, I'm gonna make a B, because I'll just color over it, you won't even be able to see it. So white, black, white, black. All right, I'm gonna start here now, that's black, so that'd be white, black, white. This little bitty spot here would be black. All right, I can go back down here, start at the this part. That was white, so that's black, white, black, white. If that's black, that's white, black, white, black. So you see how every other one. So you would just finish going through and labeling, that would be black, all your places that you're gonna color black. It's very important that you do this because it can get really confusing really easily. And once you've colored something black, there's really no way to erase it or go back. So that's why it's so important that you go in and label it. Okay, this would be black on that side. Okay, so we've got it all labeled. Then you're gonna go in and use your Sharpie or your black marker and you're going to color it. And you're gonna try to make sure you make your edges really straight. Try to take your time and do a really good job of your coloring because op art, to give it that sense of movement, you want all your lines really good and precise. So go through, color it, and then I'm gonna show you how to do the shading, and that'll give it just a little bit of extra shading to make it really look like it's moving. So I'm gonna use a white and a black colored pencil to do my shading. I'm gonna start with my white areas. I've already done one here, but I'll start next to it. I'm gonna find a black area with my white colored pencil, and in the very middle, we're gonna create a reflection. So I'm gonna start by pressing down hard with my white colored pencil and kind of just making a line. 
But then as I go out from the edges, I'm going to press down lighter and lighter as I go out. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. To where it, I just blend to the point where it just blends in with that black, you just press down lighter and lighter and you can just kind of keep going over it. So it all blends. It, it shouldn't look like lines, it should just all blend. And then the rest of this part is just black. It just creates a reflection. Let me do one more. I start in the middle, pressing down hard. And then as I go out from that, I press down lightly. And it gives the illusion of a reflection. Okay, so that's how you do all of your black places. Then on the white places, you're gonna color from the edges. So you start on the edge and you're pressing down hard again. And then as you get farther out, you press down lighter. This will give the um, impression of a shadow on it. So this is gonna make them really look three dimensional and make them look like they have form. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. You can be, you could use a crayon for this also if you didn't have colored pencils. So really light here, so it's almost, you can barely see it, it almost looks gray. So I'll do one more down here. Start on the edges, dark, lighter as you get out. The edges dark, lighter as you go out. Okay, so that just really adds to it. And when you finish, you'll have something like this with all of these, with reflections and shadows on them, and it'll really give you the sense of an op art, piece of artwork. So I'd love for you to email me pictures of what you've done. You can find my email address on the art department page um, there and email me. I can put your uh, op art piece on Artsonia. I'd love to share it with everyone. And you can also submit this for the Gumtree Art Show if you'd like to, and I'll consider that. So please email me. Please show me what you've been doing. I can't wait to see. Thanks. Bye-bye.